So I'm responding to this only because it gives an opportunity to teach more people about the gospel and how canonization happened. All right, so he says, I'm insulting people. Carthage was in Africa, but it was ruled by Rome. You do understand that the entire North African area and so much more was the entire Roman Empire. The Roman Empire wasn't just in Rome. All of North Africa was part of the Roman Empire. Then he goes on to say the canonization happened in the Roman Empire. Well, the Roman Empire ruled the world. So, but here's the thing that it doesn't make sense, and this is where it doesn't add up. The Roman Empire would never ever participate in canonization. Why? Because the Roman Empire was polytheistic. The Roman Empire was persecuting Christians for the first 300 years of the church. So explain to me why the Roman Empire, who was persecuting Christians under the DCN persecution, uh, like the, almost, the overwhelming majority of their uh, em uh, emperors until Constantine in 325 AD were persecuting Christians. So why in the world would the Roman Empire who is persecuting Christians care about what scriptures they consider canon or not. None of the Roman Empire's emperors cared anything about that. Nobody in the Roman Empire that wasn't a Christian cared anything about that. They were too busy martyring Christians to be participating in canonization. So when they say, they say stuff like this, that it was done by the Europeans, it just makes me laugh because it demonstrates you really don't know history. You really don't know anything about the Roman Empire because the same people who are persecuting Christians would not participate and our polytheists would not participate in the canonization of a monotheistic God. Thank you. Have a wonderful night. You know, I learned in Marine Corps boot camp not to trust these military chaplains. And that ain't really Marine yet, chaplain. He'll know the joke. <laughs> Just demonstrated that he actually does not understand Roman history, world history, and biblical history. You see, one of the first things I want to point out is that he said that Rome ruled the world. Well, Rome did not rule the world. Did Rome rule China? Did Rome rule Southern Africa? Did Rome rule America? I understand what he's probably trying to say. Rome ruled what becomes the most dominant culture in the world through, explora through, this, through exploration of the world, conquering of the world. As we move into the different British empires and the Spanish empire, the Portuguese, the Dutch, and so on and so forth, that they are the most influential culture in the world today. But Rome never ruled the world. So let's be clear about that. But the main thing here is his discussion about canonization. Now, this gentleman said that the Rome would not have been interested in canonizing because Rome was too busy making martyrs. This is the victim mentality that Christians like to personify over and over and over again when history demonstrates completely something different. Now, he's right. Christians were persecuted in the second in the first century, second century, third century. They were persecuted. But then in the fourth century, we had Constantine in 318 who made Christianity legal, a legal religion in the Roman Empire. And then at 325, it, they had the Council of Nicaea, which then gave Christianity the support of the Roman government, which further solidified Christianity as part of the Roman government. So Rome was not persecuting Christianity. Now, his main thing he's talking about here is canonization. So the trick here is that he took the persecution that happened prior to and then admitted himself that it wasn't until the three, fourth century in 325 that Rome took a bigger interest in Christianity. And, but he made the statement that no Roman emperor had any interest in Christianity when we know that in 381, Emperor Theodosius II made Christianity the only religion of Rome, of the Roman Empire, and forced everyone within the Roman Empire to become Christian. Now, what's important here when it talks about canonization? And let me put this up for you. In order for you to understand the process of how the Bible was canonized, one of the things that we look up here is that the Hebrew Bible, that it is believed to have been completed around 400 BCE, and then the prophets around 200 BCE, and then the writings around 90 to 100 BCE. Now, after that time frame, the canon was closed for the Torah around 100, between 90 and 100 BCE. So the Old Testament was firmly established at that time frame. 
Now, the New Testament writings began to be written around 50 to 60 CE and um, went through about 120 CE. Those were just the New Testament writings. But there were plenty of other writings that were around during that time frame and after that time frame. But what you see here is that the Council of Rome approved the 73 books canon in 382, which was later affirmed by other councils. And in 380, 393 CE, the Council of Hippo, Hippo approved the full biblical canon, which was also approved by the Roman, by the Council of Carthage a few years later. Now, before we get to the Council of Florence and all these other councils and the Council of Trent, let's understand that in 325, when they had the Nicene Council and Christianity was being organized by the Roman government, Bishop Athanasius in Alexandria, Egypt, would send out his annual Easter letter to tell with the Roman Empire when they were supposed to worship Easter. Within that, he also would put out what he believes should be the canon. And in and around 367, the those canon became the prim, per, the primary canon to which most Christians in the Roman government in the Roman in the Roman Empire rather solidified themselves on. But it is not until 382 that you get the first canon of the Bible, because in 381 is when Emperor Theodosius made all of Rome Christian. Now, what this demonstrates, and of course, later on, you have other councils that just reaffirm and reaffirm and reaffirm. Now, what this demonstrates is that the Roman government are the ones who canonized the Bible because the Christian church, the Roman, what would become the Roman Catholic Church, were working hand in hand with the government, with the emperor to canonize the Bible. So it was very in. Uh, disingenuous of him to say that no Roman emperor, no Roman government, no Romans would have been interested in canonizing Christianity because they were persecuting Christians. If you're talking prior to 318, from um, 318 with the uh, Edict of Milan, sure, I will go with you on that one. But anytime after 318, when you had the Edict of Milan, then you had the Council of Nicaea in 325, then you had the um, canonization in Hippo in 390, 382. That was all done by the Orthodox Church that was supported by the Roman government, that was supported by the Roman emperors. So therefore, his evaluation is completely wrong, completely off, and he's trying to massage the information in order to make you think that Christians have been victims of Roman persecution for the entirety of the Roman Empire, which is a complete and fallacious lie. Ain't really Marine yet, Chaplain? You keep on doing you, but you know that you just lied to everybody who watched that video. But y'all have a great day. And remember always, you have to free yourself to be yourself because your greatness is non-negotiable. Good journey, good vibration.